Yo, what is going on everybody? Need for Beans over here. Today I'm bringing you guys another GTA video. This one is going to be top 10 PvP tactics you should know about in 2020. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, the first tactic is firing up a VIP mission while you're fighting someone so you don't have to pay insurance costs. So if you guys didn't know, if you're fighting someone and you destroy their vehicle, their personal vehicle, you have to pay for it. So if it's an oppressor, it's 10,000. If it's a nice car, it's about 20,000. Uh, so if you keep fighting someone over and over and keep killing them, you're going to rack up a lot of cash. So for me, for example, I play for about 20, 15 to 20 minutes PvP someone. I can run through 300k easy. So in order to avoid it, uh, you can start up a VIP mission. Anyone works. Um, I usually start up um, Headhunter because at the end of it, you can actually grab the targets and get 20k. Uh, this time, I'm going to start fully loaded in a second here, uh, which will bring me to my next point. Another thing I want to say is if you're in a, doing a VIP mission, while the timer is running, you're also not going to get bad sport points. So not only do you not have to pay insurance costs, but you also don't have to pay bad sport points. So if you're fighting someone, you're killing them over and over, um, I would suggest to start up a VIP mission so you at least don't have to pay the insurance costs. PvP tactic number two is the fully loaded ruiner. So in order uh, to start this VIP mission, it's the it's called the fully loaded. You have to buy the fully loaded ruiner on uh, War Cash right here on this website, War Stock Cash and Carry. It's it is a little bit expensive, and it's about four million. Let's find it here. Um, where is it? Right here, ruin it 4.3 to 5.7. I would get it when it's on sale. That's when I got mine. And the car itself is not very good, but it unlocks the VIP mission fully loaded, which gives you this car, which is pretty much a fully loaded version of the Ruiner 2000. Now, this car pretty much eats oppressors for breakfast. So, first of all, this car can take about 40 to 50 explosions, so it takes a whole lot of explosions. And oppressors, you know, they're not gonna shoot you with like a, a pistol or a sniper they're just gonna shoot missiles at you so with this car uh if you have oppressors flying around doing you you fire fully loaded you're gonna take them off easy this has the best missiles in the game better than the oppressor missiles literally the best missiles um, if somebody does destroy your vehicle um while the timer is still running you will get another one uh, this car has unlimited missiles it can do this just like a regular fully loaded but uh, pretty much once you fire up this mission for 20 minutes, it can cause havoc and destruction in the whole lobby. So just keep that in mind. Point number three. This is, I would say, the most widely used tactic if uh, you see someone fighting. This is especially useful against oppressors. So if an oppressor got you pinned on the ground, here's what you do. Don't get scared. Just get your sticky bombs. And as soon as you spawn, place one right like so. And the second one, wait for the oppressor to come down. When the oppressor comes down, he's gonna have to duck to aim down to shoot a missile at you. So once he does that, you throw and you hit left of the D-pad. So what happens is you blow yourself up, so you kill yourself, and you deny him the kill, and you also have a pretty good chance of getting the kill. So you just keep doing it over and over like this. Every time, you know, this way, at least it keeps it even as long as he has you pinned on the ground. Now you obviously at some point gonna run out of sticky bombs, so you will have to somehow have enough time to go ammo and then resupply and you can easily buy it through your interaction menu. And just learn how to do it really fast and you get 25 more. Another th cool thing, if you want 50 sticky bombs, what you do is you get the bunker upgrade, the shooting range. If you do the shooting range and get uh, good points there, if you pass it, you will be able to carry 50 sticky bombs. So that's just another tip. Um, honestly, the most widely used one. If I'm ever pinned on the ground, I will start doing it. Because there's no point in just giving him the kill. Um, it's actually a really, I mean, very simple technique. You can also kind of modify it a little bit by placing a sticky bomb on the ground and then getting uh, getting your, like, we don't make or even uh, an RPG. That's how some people do it. So what happens is they'll shoot an RPG and also hit left on the deep at the same time. So you kind of play around with that technique, but you want to make sure it all starts with placing a sticky bomb right where you are so that you pretty much deny the kill to the oppressor. Point number four is the MOC. 
You can spawn it via the interaction menu if you go to services, my MOC, and you can spawn it anywhere. You need a bunker because that's where the MOC is, and that's also where you can modify um, your cab and your trailer at gun, etc. But what I wanted to point out about the MOC is when you upgrade the cab to 100% armor, so you go to this guy to customize it, customize cab, if you add armor to 100%, the cab will be able to withstand about 69 missiles. It's a lot. Um, and they also have two different cab options. So th you have this cab, which is um, better for protection against bullets. So it has better bulletproof windows. So to customize your cab, you go to your phone, to Warstock, Cash and Carry, uh, go to your MOC and renovate. So you have the Hauler Custom, which is the one that I have. Um, this one is really good at protecting you from people shooting at you. Um, but the problem with this cab is you can't throw stickies or any grenades out of it. There's also the Phantom Custom, which is a little worse uh, to... a little has a little worse bulletproof protection when it comes to the windows, but you can actually throw stickies out of it. Um, and it's actually really useful against the pressers. So because the MOC can take 69 missiles, and oppressors aren't going to shoot you through the window. They're just going to start firing missiles at you. So what you can do is just drive around, and if the oppressor gets too close to you, behind you, you can throw a sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this cab really quickly and show you guys what I'm talking about. So you customize cab, and when you switch cabs, you will have to um, pretty much purchase all the upgrades once again. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I mean. As you can see, the windows here are you know bigger, so you have worse protection against people shooting at you but the benefit is it's a huge benefit is the fact that you can throw stickies out of your cab so there's that moc whenever you spawn it make sure you disconnect the trailer there's no no point in carrying the trailer the trailer will get destroyed a lot quicker than the cab so just don't bother with it you can also go a lot faster without the trailer so yeah with this one as you can see there's not you pretty much don't have any bulletproof protection but you're able to throw uh, throwables out of the window. So if you have a presser behind you, you can just throw a sticky. Let me show that again. Boom! And try to get him. A lot of times the presser will just hover right behind you and spam their missiles. And those that don't really know what you're doing, you can easily kill him that way. So it's um, a great tactic to use um, against the pressers and just players in general. So if you're going to be targeting a player, you want to reverse into them. So you want to get a AP pistol. That's the best pistol, and you want to reverse into them because that way they can't shoot you while you can shoot them. So very simple, just like that. And they're going to try to shoot you, but they're not going to be able to. If you come at them straight on, they will easily kill you. Easily. So that's just, uh, if you guys didn't know, the MOC is actually really useful in PvP fighting. So this is going to be like two tactics in one. So the first one is apartment invites. So if you have a high-end apartment, you can start the heist that um, uh, what's his name Ron offers so right here Ron so you start the heist do one prep or don't do it at all just just get through the first opening cutscene and once you do that every time you log in you will get an invite from Ron to the apartment so under your job list you will have an invite to Ron from the apartment you can also get an invite from Lester to your facility if you start the act one heist you just gotta start it you don't have to do it or complete it just start it so that you start getting the invites. The benefits of these invites is they instantly teleport you to either your apartment or facility, whichever one you choose. So this really helps to either avoid a sticky situation or if you, you know, stuck on the ground and you don't want to keep throwing sticky bombs, you can just accept the apartment invite and um, easily teleport to your apartment, regroup, and then do whatever you gotta do. Uh, this brings me to my next point, uh, which is faster oppressor to spawns so late in the latest patch they added a five minute cooldown on the oppressor mark 2 so after you if you destroy it you have to wait five minutes for it to respawn again there is a way around it kind of an interesting way so this is the combination with the apartment invites so if you guys can see i went ahead and spawned my terabyte next to my apartment so let's say i'm fighting someone over here i'm just fighting them you know whatever boom and they, they destroy my oppressor for example all right they destroy my oppressor and i'm kind of stuck not necessarily in the ocean but i'm just kind of stuck here 
So at that point, what you can do is simply uh, pull out your phone. Let's go ahead and pull out our phone. Accept the run invite. It will instantly teleport you to your apartment. It's pretty quick. You don't really go in the cloud. It's kind of a semi-cloud screen. Uh, let's wait for it to load. There you go. You just cancel that. Go ahead and call Morris Mutual because your oppressor was destroyed. You have to call Morris. Uh, let's call Morris. MMI. All we right, terabyte. It, boom. I can do so that. now, instead of waiting five minutes for your, uh, for your oppressor, you just leave your apartment, grab uh, any vehicle, go to your terabyte, and then you have your oppressor once again. So you can keep doing that over and over. That way, you don't have to actually wait for the five minute oppressor. Um, cooldown so I'm just show you guys just usually just pop a buzzard sponsoring close um, and then especially if you're fighting on one corner of the map it's gonna take time for the person to you know get to your apartment or your facility so if you place it your terabyte in a convenient spot it's a really easy way to grab your oppressor you can also call in your terabyte as you enter the apartment it doesn't have to be there already it's just cool because the terabyte is essentially a mobile spawn point for the oppressor. Uh, so in a way, you can kind of avoid the five minute cooldown. So once you get to your terabyte, the oppressor is going to be right there. Grab it and you can come back to fight it. I'm just showing you guys right there. All right, All right guys, the last two points I have is ghost organization and first person view. So for ghost organization, if you guys don't know, it's a very easy way to kind of get out of the heat for a second or you know get out of the way or just hide for a second so what you do is you start a CEO go to CEO abilities and pop ghost organization this will give you three minutes where you can you're not gonna be on the radar so if you're fighting someone let's say even an oppressor that has you stuck on the ground what you want to do is pop ghost and then kill yourself the reason you want to kill yourself is because you're blip is gonna disappear when you pop ghost but the guy is still gonna know where you, your last location so once you kill yourself you're still gonna have ghost but you'll respawn in a random location so he's not gonna know where you are it's very useful to like get away maybe call in your vehicle or do what you want to do um, and the last point i have is first person view so a lot of people when they're fighting you'll see them strafing left and right if you're in first person view you are able to do that much faster as you can see rather than if you do that you know what i mean see how slow you're going left and right and if you're in first person view a lot faster and it's kind of like more steady so if you're sniping with someone make sure and they're strafing you have like a strafing battle make sure you go in first person view that way um, at least you have a little bit of an advantage uh, when it comes to shooting you also just the controls are a little bit more responsive uh, so if you have a chance, you want to make sure you uh, to be in first person. All right, uh, hope you guys enjoyed these ten PVP tactics you should know about a video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Need for beans, out. Peace.